So our first talk today is on network access control, the company-wide team building exercise that only you know about, by Dean Webb from Networking Forums. Let's give Dean a round of applause. Thank you, thank you very much here. This is my uh, first time to present at a technical conference. I've done stand-up before, and I have to say this is a lot easier than stand-up because it's serious, so if you don't laugh, I'm good, all right. And I got a laugh, so there, I'm even better. All right, network access control. I gave it this title because uh, when I started uh, at my current role here, I was the new guy, and I was young, I was brash, I was eager, and they said, hey, you could do the network access control project. And I thought, yeah, I wanna show them what I can do, and I didn't realize it was the crap project that nobody else wanted. And then I found out why. Soon I became the NAC engineer. That's right, I am the one who knacks. <laughs> and <laughs> I, it was my job to tell people, you're not gonna be able to connect this to the network anymore, or you have to have a certificate, or we have to have another login. And I was the bad guy. I was showing up and just, just being mean to everybody. And I was alone. I was telling people what I wanted from them, what I wanted to do to them, what I against them. It was a whole relationship. And the, uh, as I talked to other NAC engineers, I realized that the NAC project can sometimes go off the rails and <laughs> do things to the network that you didn't want to have happen. Uh, and, and this is largely, again, due to the lack of communication between different br branches of the business and the actual network access control project. Uh, I, I've, I've talked to people where, yes, it was Skynet Unleashed, where it brought down an entire production line, it brought down the worldwide ATM network, it, it did horrible, horrible things. And I will not say where those happened, because Charterhouse rules there, uh, or Chatham House rules, sorry. Uh, but yeah, they happened, and oh, it was bad, and it was bloody. But it doesn't have to be that way, okay? Get some help, is what I learned. If I'm going to do this thing right, I need to bring in other people from other organizations to assist me in this project. And yeah, I show the Care Bears here, but that's because they care. If I bring them in, they'll care about what I'm doing. Uh, except maybe that guy, he looks a little grumpy, but oh well, he's still part of the team, right? And you think about this, NAC involves much more than the network. It involves everything that connects to the network. All your Windows clients, all your Linux, all your Macintosh all your wireless devices, the guest networks, the phones, the light bulbs nowadays. That's right, some guy over in maintenance has bought a whole line of IP enabled light bulbs, has plugged them in, and you're wondering what happened to my DHCP scope? <laughs> and, and you're also wondering what happened to my license count on my NAC product, because now I gotta account for these light bulbs? Yeah, you want everybody. Everybody who's got something that touches the network needs to know about the project and needs to be able to offer input to it. You want to have a core team for your network access control project. Uh, some of you may know this series, uh, the IT crowd from England, wonderful things, but yeah. You, you've got your client guy, the network security person there, you've got your wireless fella, and then somebody here on the end here, the executive, the director type, who at the very least can talk to other departments and let them know, hey, you're about, your people are about to get email from my people, and I want your people to be able to help them as best as they can. When the executives talk to executives, when managers talk to managers, they're able to help smooth the wheels that are going to grind slowly forward. If, if I am just sending emails to some guy over in client and say, hey, we're about to install a whole new package of client software and it's gonna have to have admin level access to all the Windows devices. I send that to him directly, he's taking that cold and I get immediate resistance. If my manager talks to his manager, it's a little easier. If my executive talks to his executive, it's even easier than that. At that point, the organization becomes bought into the idea of this network access control succeeding. And if I have a client person actually on my team, where we're having our team launch meeting and he's there and I say, hi, I'm Dean, he says, hi, I'm Roy, and we talk and like, oh, you also like music? I like music too, hey. All right, now when I ask him to do something, hey, how about getting a client installed on all the Windows boxes? Instead of, absolutely not, it's, well, that might be difficult, but that's good. I can work with that might be difficult. That's a much more interesting and productive conversation than the one that starts with no. So, although those also start interesting conversations. 
But yes, you want a team. And I quote from the IT crowd, team, 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 team. I even love saying the word team. You want that. Be that team builder. If you're the NAC engineer, you, <laughs> this is part of the company-wide exercise in team building. You know about it, you educate the others, and then they become part of your team. You want your vendor to help kick out there too. You've got your uh, sales engineer, he can provide a lot of good insight as to how this thing can be accomplished technically. You also want to talk to the sales rep. And I know, <laughs> how many of you really enjoy talking to sales reps? I mean, you live for that day. I'm getting crickets out there, it's an oil painting. Nobody like, how many like somebody else to talk to the sales guys? Now the hands come up, okay? <laughs> we know what happened, but it, it, break it down inside. Someone's gotta do it, if not you, who? If not now, when? You talk to the salesman, he can give you the numbers you need because NAC is going to be a big ticket project. No matter what your organization is, this is going to be something that will, when you submit the budget item, they're gonna go, whoa, a license for everything that connects to the network? Yes, a license for everything that connects to the network. And the, har ooh, that's a hardware cost there, yeah. <laughs> and the sales guy is gonna be able to talk to your purchasing people and discuss how this can be worked out. Hopefully it's a salesperson that can learn to work with the way your organization does business. How to invoice, how to do everything properly there, but that's a discussion that you don't want to have. But you do want to be able to talk to the salesperson so he knows Here's your environment, here's what's going on, here's the things that you're gonna be looking for, and he can communicate that properly to your managers, your executives, your purchasing department, and help get the system that you want to have. Because it's quite easy to buy the, the wrong NAC system for your environment. <laughs> it's quite easy to do that. And remember, this is your job. You're the NAC engineer, you have the final say on the answers, these are part of your team, they will advise you, you take that advice in and then you communicate in. Now, I've mentioned vendors. Which vendor is the best? Usually, it's the second one. I've talked to a lot of guys who've done NAC around the world, and repeatedly I hear, oh, yeah, we ripped out vendor X. It was a piece of junk. Put in vendor Y. Worked great. And then somewhere else, oh, vendor Y? Pfft, please. We tore them out. We put in vendor X. That's, we're very happy with vendor X. And I realized it doesn't matter who the vendor is all the time. There are some places where, yeah, a vendor is going to be better for this than that, but in general, it wasn't the vendor that made the difference, it was the experience, it was the lessons learned, it was the ability to do it right. And the first time they did it, they made a whole lot of mistakes, learned tons of things from it, and they became very experienced. And with that experience came wisdom. And, I mean, lack of funding can be another problem there. They went to enforcement mode too soon. Lots of things happened there. And it all comes down to a lack of teamwork. And I, as I watched this, I thought, you know what? There's no reason that my current vendor has to be ripped out and we go with vendor two. I can make this one work if I bring the people together, if I have the right information, if I can get the right funding, get all these pieces together, my first vendor can be the right one. And, and there are places where this has happened through some foresight or luck, they put a team together and having that team approach gave them a better shot at security a better shot at getting this done successfully. I mentioned talking with other people. You need to go out and not just, not find, find not just me, but find other people who've done NAC projects around the world, talk with them. They're your grizzled veterans. They, yes, these guys have gone through a NAC project. You can see it in their faces. Oh yeah, hey, remember? We did NAC back in Okinawa. Okay, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> so if you've done NAC before, you can think of, yeah, all the, uh, the Internet of Things was coming over the hill and all we had was a switch. Um, you want vendor references from your vendors. When you're talking, if you're going through a pilot phase and you're testing or comparing vendors one against the other, ask the vendors, can you tell me somebody at another company about my size that has also used your product successfully? Have that conversation. You want to have it where you're having a conversation without the vendor present, so that way the guy can be absolutely honest and no one's going to interrupt and say, oh, but wait, if he bought this license, it would have gone bad. No, you want to talk to the guy, what did he go through? What did she experience? What did they have to face? And from that information, it can inform you about possible pitfalls with the product that you either need to plan carefully about or that maybe make it something where it's out of the running. But you talk to these people. You want to read product reviews. and. 
sadly, NAC does not have a lot of product reviews for it because you know, it, it's a very niche product. It's something that doesn't happen to, all the time to everyone everywhere. But when you find those reviews, talk to those people, maybe send them an email. Okay? Go to forums online and just look for various vendors and query on them and see what people have to say about them. But if you learn from the experiences of others and you make them part of your extended team, someone that you could email later on and say, hey, we're hitting this. What happened to you when you faced down all your iPhones that couldn't take a certificate of this or, oh, well, we did this. Oh, thank you. That would be very helpful. And that will reduce the chance you rip something out and go with another vendor. No matter what NAC product you use, though, you will have to use 802.1x. Uh, even there are vendors who will promise, like, oh, we have an 802.1x uh, free solution. Uh, yeah, but when you get to wireless, oh, yeah, we use 802.1x. Okay. No matter what, you'll have it. And your NAC system will be the radio server that provides the authentication for either all the wireless network or all the wireless and wired network. I do not know this man personally, but I want to shake his hand. I do not have a vested financial interest in this book, but I wish I did because this has saved my life many times. You want the 802.1x port-based authentication book by Edwin Lyle Brown. I have gone through bitter experience, and this was my salvation. It is a full run-through of the entire protocol from start to finish, bottom to top, tells you where, how it started, why people made decisions about the growth of 802.1x, what it has led to. It mentions how different vendors do different things, but it also talks about how a device actually authenticates with that, and you use that, and you, people say it's not working, you get the Wireshark captures, you, you open this book to the right page, and you can say, ah, here, uh, it's a client problem because the switch sent this and the client didn't respond, there you go, right here. And you feel so good knowing that and being able to point to something in a book with certainty, with certainty. And then you go to the other people and then deal with it. But that, that, that is a godsend. Please, buy that book and read it if you haven't already and you're in a NAC project. If you're about to be in one, get it now. All right, I, I, I beat that dead horse. Okay, and as you go through the project, you want to keep recruiting and keep selling, okay? You are the, as the lead engineer, you are going to sell it to the rest of your organization. You are not going to just turn it on and hope that nobody complains. You've got to talk to other people because it's going to tie into so many other things. One thing that network access control vendors have realized is that the NAC system itself can be this hub that orchestrates all the other IT components that you have. You, you may have vulnerability scanning. It ties in with the client, so the client can help provide reports up to the vulner vulnerability scanner. You've got FireEye as one example. Well, that's going to tie in with some of these vendors here, and then the client will report back up the stream. You've got an antivirus solution. The NAC will tie into that. So this is something that can be very useful and very helpful. How many of you have people that, uh, I don't know, you, you have Windows in your environment. Anybody have Windows? Okay. Yeah, I have a few hands are up. Okay. You don't want to admit. I, I understand. But the package management on Windows, SCCM, it can tie into the NAC solution. So that way when they get on the network, it forces them to have that package. If you can tell the SCCM guy that you're going to give him a report not on what he has to do, but on what, he's all, what has already been done, he would hug you and kiss you if it was not an HR violation. I have seen this myself. So, <laughs> but you, you sell that point. You go to the other groups and you say, hey, you know what, with this NAC, I tell you what it can do. It can make your job easier. How, how can, I will tell you, uh, you know, maybe not as cheesy, but if you just give them the information, they can run with it and they can see this is something that they want to have. And they'll start asking other people, when are we going to get NAC turned on for this and that? That will push your product forward. That will push your success with this project forward. When you do the project, you want some quick wins, all right? Uh, the, I've talked to consultants who have done this successfully at other firms, and they say, all right, number one, get the wireless done. Wireless has got 802.1x built into it. Turn that on, get it going. Issue all the certs from, it could be a Windows Certificate Authority that does it or some other uh, homegrown one. It doesn't have to be a fancy in trust or VeriSign. Just get the cert on every box, they check it, boom, 
that is secure. Lock it down. VPN users, they come in through a little choke point and then explore the rest of your network. Well, put NAC there so it can say everybody who's connected with a VPN, boom. Now they're, they're properly vetted. They are the ones who should be on the network. We're good there. Then the next success, that building or floor that has all the IT guys in it. Not because they want to experience the potential hell that an ACT project is, but because they'll give you rich error reporting. You know what I'm talking about. They're not just going to say, it's slow or it's broken. They're going to say, hey, why is it that I can't SSH over to 10.1.3.5? Aha, oh, OK, thank you. All right, that's good. And then you can work with that and say, oh, here's why, because we blocked this or that. Or, and, and you can go from there. But those are your early successes. Those are where you can say, we've had these things. We've got the value for the company. Now we can build on this and go forward from there. And the last one. Monitor everything before enforcing anything. So important because NAC turns into story time. You're going to turn this thing on and people will insist, I have zero devices of that particular kind on this network. You turn on NAC and it finds two of them. Oh, wait, yeah, that's right. We do have two now that you mention it. What are the, oh yeah. You know, 10 years ago, we couldn't upgrade payroll, and so we had to leave these devices on, and now that's how we get paid. It's always, you know, some mission critical legacy application that you find, and you've got a story with it. If you turned on, if you went on the assurance that, oh yeah, all we have on this floor are, you know, Windows 7, that's it, nothing else. You turn on your NAC and you let all the Windows 7 in, you block everything else, boom, payroll goes down or a production line goes down, or the global ATM network goes down, and, and you're, you're in deep, deep, deep trouble. But you do the monitoring, you find this, and you say, okay, this is an unknown device. Tell me some more about it. Or why is it that all of our phones, which have one label on the front, have a different kind of nick in the back? Oh, well, see, this manufacturer is a you know, subcontractor. Like, okay, thanks. That's good to know, because now, when I'm trying to figure out what phones are allowed and, or not allowed on my VoIP network, I now know that there's some other NIC vendors to look at besides vendor. So get those wins in first before you hit the other stuff. And be ready to have resources diverted to solve problems that aren't NAC's trouble. But because NAC is new and involves math, nobody understands it, they want to blame it. Uh, th this actually came from, I think the firewall is blocking my it's not the firewall. Well, you put NAC on, they'll stop complaining about the firewall, and now it's NAC's problem for the same fuzzy little errors out there. They'll say, can you turn it off? Your job is to insist that NAC not be turned off, but that we, we figure out what's going on to determine what is causing your errors. And again, back to monitoring. If you're monitoring, you could go up to someone and say, if we turned it on today, your device would be blocked. Could you help me figure out and then once you ascertain that, okay, now that we've done these things, it should not be blocked, you turn it on, it's not blocked, he knows you're not to blame. And he'll go back to the firewall guy, which is also me. <laughs> All right, there will be shocks aplenty here. And this is, goes over a few of the things you'll see. Uh, number two, their client is in a build state. You can't do 802.1x with it. I read that in the Edwin Lyle Brown book. Uh, Intel tried to figure out a way to do it, and they said, no, no, it can't be done. Ah! And so you know, the guy will say, oh, I've got these build devices. What do I do? Well, it's either come up with some very elaborate rules or sequester them to a particular area. You know, that's what I learned from other guys. The native Windows 802.1x supplicant can be a horror story there, too. This one. Uh, the C star O just got knacked. What do you tell her? I want to say you're welcome <laughs> because you're secure. If people want to make exclusions for upper security, it's not just a NAC problem, it's a company wide perception problem about what security should or should not do. And you have to get the idea that if the C star something is getting knacked or getting blocked or getting hit with a proxy error message, that has to be a level of security that is enforced company-wide and that everybody follows these rules and everyone will be more secure as a result. Um, there will be sensitive devices that nobody knew about that get knacked. They say, oh, that's just a printer. They have no idea that an NMAP scan will cause it to have a memory failure. I had that happen. 
Um, and then the last one, discovering the deadly effect on radius traffic of the combination of Windows not respecting MTUs with EPAL traffic and default Cisco IOS QoS logic on a saturated WAN link. <laughs> that was six weeks, but we solved it. <laughs> we solved it, okay. <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you want to hit me up on that, I, I can take this offline because it's a long, long shaggy dog story. But there will be shocks. You will have plan B, which is plan A with an element of panic. You'll have your architect come up with these beautiful lines, and you will discover that those lines are actually ditches between a cornfield. I picked this road in particular because when I was going through Mexico and I wanted to go from Veracruz to Tres Apotes to see some Olmec ruins there, Google Maps said, oh, this is the fastest route. This other route in gray would be two hours longer. This is the fastest route. This is what Google Maps told me would work. It does not. <laughs> It does not, it took an extra hour over and above the time the other one would have had. This I bring up because your vendors, your architects will say, ah, yes, this is how it'll work. All your radius traffic will have high priority on this WAN link. Nothing bad will happen to it. Back to the problem I mentioned earlier, turns out it fragments and the fragments are not marked as radius, so they get dropped and there's your ditch between cornfields. Um, also, they may say things like, hey, we could, you have a virtual solution? Great, we'll do it all virtual. And then you find out places where the virtual environment that you plan to install doesn't have enough uh, CPUs to handle your load. And <laughs> yeah, what do you, I don't know what you do there, um, except buy more stuff. But you know, this will happen. You've got to be flexible. The project plan should have flexibility, not only for troubleshooting other problems, but for also dealing with unusual circumstances that arise that don't go according to plan. If you build in that time and you build in those resources as little extra fluff areas, and I, I've, I've seen project management before, I know that they can do that. They can build in some cushion, do that. A, a NAC project should never be run lean. It should never be run t on a tight string and a tight schedule because it's gonna encompass so many things. It'll touch the entire company. It has to be one of these more company transformation sort of things. So get the team together early. Build out your informal team, the guys who aren't attached to the project but know a lot about it because you talk to them. Read that 802.1x book by Brown. Go for those early wins. Monitor everything before enforcing anything and be re ready to troubleshoot just about anything at any time. And you've got a chance that you won't have to rip something out. As Mel Brooks said, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, life is a play, and we're unrehearsed. That's knack. For further cussing and discussing, you can find me. I'm at www.networkingforums.com. I should actually make that HTTPS. I just got my cert on there. Yay. Um, I, I'm very active in the security area there. I uh, also have a set of videos on it on YouTube. I'm ZZZPTM at Gmail. If you're not a robot, you can figure out what the yada, yada, yada is. And also Peerlist is hosting all the events here, so I'm active there and you can find me and talk with me there. So I've got a little bit of time left for cussing and discussing it here. Any questions, comments? Yes, sir, in the back. How big of an organization? How, how, big, of a, how big of an organization? Yeah, your size of your organization. Yeah, mine is, uh, my employer won't let me say which employer it is, but we have over 140,000 Windows endpoints alone. So yeah. Knack. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, the author's first name for the book. For the book? You mean Edwin Lyle Brown? Yeah, well, I'll go right to it. All right there, Edwin Lyle Brown. I, I, I want to get a tattoo with that on it. But yeah, that's a really good resource there. To, to what extent? Am I the only Knack guy? Right now, I've actually gotten at least one other engineer trained on it <laughs> what was for, for all issues, and I've got two others that are trained on it for wireless, and I'm gonna be getting more training out. I will not stand alone, uh, because we are gonna build this out as a service, and I'm, I have a background as a teacher, so I'm actually able to go and get other groups in there. But yeah, they, they finally listened to me. They got some more resources attached, not just to the project, but also to the idea that this is a service. Yeah. To, to what extent do you do the posture, you know, going mm -hmm. over and above just you're authorized on the port or not, like right. dynamic ACLs and those types of things? Like, What we have is um, 
the first thing that we wanted to do was just to say, can we get them on the network without killing everything? <laughs> um, so we're not even at the posturing part, but we have tested things like that where we said, okay, you know, in this, in this IT area, let's see what happens if we block everybody that doesn't have a current virus signature. And about 20% of the people got blocked, and then they were able to go and download it, and we thought, okay, whew, that works. So we do a remediation VLAN, and we can talk more on that. So We yeah. have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned 140 uh, Windows endpoints. Uh, how, how are you handling the uh, non-802.1x supplicant and supported endpoints? And uh, in reference to organizations that have hundreds of thousands of endpoints that are not your standard PC. Yeah. So um, Mac, Mac bypass, are there other actually, solutions you found that are good? What we've done is a combination of trying to find things that do as little Mac bypass as possible because that can be a huge tax on the servers. And part of that also comes into vendor selection. There are some vendors that are going to be very effective with non 802.1x environments and some that will fall to pieces. So do we have time for one more, one more question? No. Oh, okay. Get me here. I'll be roaming around. I'd love to talk about this because I love it. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you. Las Vegas rules. Good night. <laughs>